Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing the Mid Year Book Freakout Tag. <laughs> I absolutely adore this tag. I've done this tag every single year that I've been on booktube I'm pretty sure. This is basically a book tag talking about all of the books that you've read so far this year. I believe I have read 94 or 95 so far this year which is insane. I've never read this many books halfway through a year. I think the highest number of books that I've ever read in a year was last year and I think I read like 120 or something. I'm definitely going to pass that. <laughs> It was kind of difficult to pick between the 90 something books that I've read this year. So we're gonna get started. <laughs> so question number one is the best book that you've read so far in 2020. And that one is definitely without a doubt Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. Our main character Chloe has a chronic illness called fibromyalgia and it is very similar to my own chronic illness. So that was the main reason why I loved this book so much is because I connected to Chloe so much. She's also stinking hilarious. Okay, so basically Chloe has this chronic illness and she's been living with her parents for a while but then something happens in like the first chapter where she realizes she needs to get a life, she needs to make a like to-do list of things she wants to do before she dies basically. And so she moves out of her parents house and into her own apartment and there she meets the superintendent of the building, Red. And uh, Red may or may not end up having to help her complete this like bucket list that Chloe has. And they don't really like each other. It's like a hate to love romance as well. It was so well written. I connected so much to Chloe. I don't have her chronic illness, but like I just felt the same way that she feels like all the time and it was amazing. Red is like the ultimate book boyfriend for me. I am in love with him. I will forever be in love with him. <laughs> Question number two is the best sequel you've read this year. And for this one, I haven't really read all that many sequels. Um, I have started series this year. The one that I'm picking for this one is a series that I have started this year. It's the third book in the Wicked Villains series called A Worthy Opponent by Katie Roberts. So this series is about heroines or heroes in a story and if they got with the villain instead of the good guy in their Disney story. This book is about Tinkerbell and Hook and their relationship. These are very like taboo, steamy, BDSM kind of books, so be aware of that. I believe both of them are bisexual if I'm not mistaken. It's like an arranged marriage or marriage of convenience story. I really enjoy this one. It's my favorite book in the Wicked Villain series for sure. Question number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. Okay so I picked three because there are three. The first one is My Calamity Jane by the Lady Janies, Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jodie Meadows. I have absolutely adored the two Lady Janey books that they've come out with. The first one was a Lady Jane Grey retelling and the second one was a Jane Eyre retelling and I believe My Calamity Jane is a like western which is so exciting to me. I haven't read a lot of westerns like ever. I don't have a physical copy on, on me at the moment. I haven't purchased it yet but it's one of my most anticipated reads of the year and it was just released so I'm very excited to go purchase myself a copy so I can read this book. This whole like companion series are basically just funny retellings of Jane stories and I've loved the past two so I'm very excited for this one. Next I also have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have no idea what this book is about except that it is a fantasy romance book and I absolutely adore Jennifer L. Armentrout so I'm very excited for this. I've had a bunch of my friends rate it very highly. I don't know anything about it though so I can't give you a summary and I'm very sorry. And then the last one for this question is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is also our lovely ladies live show pick for the month of June. So if you've read this book already or if you haven't and you want to be sure to read it by the end of June when Jen, Ashley, and I are going to be discussing this book in our live show. It will be on my channel this month so stay tuned for that. I'm very excited for it. But this one is basically about two writers and they end up renting beach houses or staying in beach houses that are next door to each other and I believe he writes literary fiction and she writes romance books and they're both in kind of a uh, writing slump. They both have writer's block. They both task each other to write each other's genres I believe. So I'm very excited for this because I love writing. I love reading. I love the beach. So question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Again I am having three for this. <laughs> First we have Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. It's Twilight all in the perspective of Edward and I am so excited. I am a total Twilight. I am Twilight trash. Like you can come at me all you want. I love Twilight till the day I die. I am obsessed with Twilight. It is one of the main reasons why I fell in love with reading and fell in love with romance. So 
I'm very excited for this. It comes out in September, I believe, very close to my birthday, so it's going to be an amazing birthday present. Then we have Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. I'm obsessed with Talia Hibbert. I've actually recently, you'll see in my June wrap-up, I have read so many of her books recently. Fell in love with her writing all over again. Get a Life, Chloe Brown, my favorite book of the year. I'm so excited for Take a Hint, Danny Brown. I believe this is a bodyguard romance and our main character woman is bisexual. I absolutely loved Danny from what little we saw of her in Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I'm so incredibly excited for this and I'm so jealous of those people who have arcs like I am so insanely jealous <laughs> and lastly for this question I have the Epos King by Grace Draven this is the third book in the Radiance series it's called the Wraith Kings series but Radiance was the first book and it is one of my favorite books of all time and the Epos King is the third book in this series the couple is different and it's about Anuzet and Saravek and I loved them so much in the first and second book because they had such a banter and it's kind of like hate to love and she is a Kai and he is a human so there's that dynamic as well basically this is a fantasy romance book by the way if you don't know about radiance a fantasy romance book where there's two different species that don't really correlate with each other at all they're not at war necessarily but they're not they don't integrate at all and so the first book was about a human and a Kai getting in an arranged marriage and everyone like freaking out about it but like it was a friends to lovers romance through the marriage this one I believe it's just gonna be a hate to love she's also like a kick-ass warrior woman and I am here for it <laughs> okay it is shout out time we're going with this one this one is <sighs> it's Ashley from Ash Heart Books Ashley is probably one of my best friends here on YouTube. I absolutely adore her. She is uh, another co-host for the Lovely Ladies Live show that I do with her and Jen. I love both those ladies so much. She is one of the first friends that I ever made here on YouTube. We like started around the same time and we have just been bringing each other up and like just being friends through this whole experience. Ashley is a romance reader. If you are not subscribed to Ashley and you read romance, what are you doing with your life? She reads mainly historical romances so if you adore historical romances there you go but she reads like any kind of romance she just is a lover of historical romances so i absolutely adore ashley so please 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 go check her out question number five is biggest disappointment and that would have to go to unfortunately Tavern to Hoax by Martha Waters. I gave this book three stars thinking that it was going to be a five stars for me this is a historical romance book dealing with a married couple my dog is playing on the bed if you can't hear are you having fun? <laughs> Are you having fun? <laughs> this couple got married really young and they were very much in love. Then the book like jumps to four years later when they have not spoken to each other in four years. They live in the same house but they don't speak to each other at all. Then one day when he's at um, one of their estates or something that's like a journey away, the wife gets a letter from his friend saying that he that her husband was in a horrible accident and she needs to come immediately and on her way there and when she gets there like he's perfectly fine. Like he's like nothing's wrong with him. And so it's just like a book about them playing tricks on each other but it's not playing tricks on each other it's playing one trick on each other that length that like, goes throughout the whole entire book Ugh, i was just very disappointed by this book i gave it three stars it was okay i know that people might love this i i just didn't love it the characters were very childish to me i was just i was just disappointed by it unfortunately question number six is the biggest surprise i have two for this one. First, we're going to go with Toxic Desire by Robin Lovett this is an alien romance book and i have yet to find before i read this book a Alien Romance that hooked me as much as Ice Planet Barbarians and I just went into this one thinking that it would just be like one of those alien romance books that I normally just give three stars to because they're nothing like Ice Planet Barbarians but then I read this one and fell in love with it. So this is a alien romance and in this world humans are at war with these aliens that are like completely gold like everything about them is gold their eyes their hair their body like everything. This general of this ship their ship gets invaded by these aliens and so the general is a woman and she ends up fighting with this alien guy and they end up accidentally like while they're fighting end up getting released into a space pod that's on the ship and it crashes on this planet where if you're not constantly doing it you will be in complete horrible pain <laughs> like it's it's nuts y'all it's it's a crazy book i absolutely just it's like candy to me like i i just read it for pleasure and it was so much fun to read so it was 
a huge surprise for me that I loved it so much. And then the other book that I have for this is Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. I had no idea that I would love this book as much as I did. When I first read this, I gave it four stars, but then uh, like a week later, I was like, I keep thinking about this book. I have to bump it up to a five. Like it is so good. I had no idea that I would love it this much. So this is a like fantasy YA book which is also a big surprise for me because I have not been reading a lot of young adult fantasy books because they are so similar like everything is the same but this one I found like so unique. So there are three perspectives in this book. We have Elise, Bastion, and Sabine. So Sabine and Elise are both bone criers. Basically they're witches that kind of like fairy dead people to where they go either like heaven or hell kind of. For bone criers you can have like three powers but uh you have to kill the animal that has the power and wear their bones around your neck and to like fully become like a bone crier you have to collect the, the three animals you want their bones and then you have to kill your true love. Elise has finally harvested all three of her bones so she's going to go and kill her true love. Sabine her best friend goes with her on this journey and Bastion uh, witnessed when he was a little boy his father being killed by bone crier so it's been his duty like his whole life to hunt bone criers down and kill them for revenge. And so the night that Elise goes to kill her true love, Bastion may be there as well. I absolutely adored this. I feel like more people need to read this and more people need to talk about it. Question number seven is favorite new author. I have four. Um, I've read so many Katie Robert. I think I've read like five Katie Robert books and they've all been either four or five stars from me. So I've been loving Katie Robert. Helena Hunting, I've read her Pucked series this year and really enjoyed them. Mia Sheridan, she wrote Archer's Voice, which is one of my favorite books of the year so far. Also Rebecca Weatherspoon. I know I've only read Rafe by her, but like I loved her writing so stinking much. I need to read more of her books, that's for sure. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. I have three. <laughs> I know I just talked about Rafe, a Buff Millie Nanny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. So Rafe is on this list. Um, I absolutely like adored him. This buff ginger like sweetheart teddy bear. Oh my goodness. I loved him. I loved him so much and the way he treated his love interest and his love interest's daughters was just like so heartwarming. We have Lance Romero from one of the Pucked books. I think it's called Pucked Off is his book. I absolutely adored him, like loved him. And then lastly for this question, I have Zeus from Welcome to the Dark Side by Jonah Darling. I loved Zeus. <laughs> I, I loved him. That's all I'm gonna say. I loved Zeus. <laughs> Nine is newest favorite character. This one I'm going with Sabine from Bone Cryer's Moon. Sabine is Elise's best friend. Sabine is not in this couple at all but she is like one of my new favorite characters of all time like I love her which is like so different for me because I normally like the friend isn't really like my favorite character in books but she has her own point of view in here which at first I was really annoyed by because she wasn't in the couple but then I was like I love her so much and like her character growth is literally amazing. I also just adored obviously Chloe from Getty Life Chloe Brown. I love her with every fiber of my being. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. I have two for this one. Um, we have Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This is a young adult book dealing with chronic illness. The reason why I cried is because I connected to it so much and I found a book that I could really 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 relate to. You saw me crying for The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I reread this book, one of my favorite books of all time. This is an alien dystopian book by the way. You can go check out my rereading my favorite books um, video which I will link down below because I go very much in depth of this book and how much I love this book. The reason why I cried is because of our main character Wanda. Like she is like one of the best characters I've ever read from in my entire life. So I cried for her. <laughs> Question number 11 is a book that made you happy. For this one, I'm going with Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt. I listened to this like in a car ride that I had to take, like going from my college town to my hometown one time. And I absolutely adored this. So Heidi has this huge crush on her next door neighbor, but she does not have enough of, like she doesn't have enough courage to go and ask him out. She's just been pining over him for so long. And then she ends up getting a job at a like, erotic novel company. She doesn't know that that's what it's for. She just thinks it's an audiobook company. She doesn't know they only do dirty books. To get used to being in that environment and hearing about all these books, she decides to start 
her own like little podcast while she's drunk basically she just reads dirty books on this podcast and it kind of like blows up and it helps her like gain the confidence to go ask out her neighbor and it is one of the funniest books that I've ever read in my entire life I was smiling the whole entire time I was listening to this book on the car ride like my cheeks hurt I was laughing and smiling so sticky much I love this book so much question number 12 is the most beautiful book that you've bought this year for this one I am probably going to go with uh there's bone Cryer's moon obviously and then we have crescent city by sarah j mass i just i am in love with this book and this cover i know i haven't talked about this book yet but this was one of my favorites of the year too this book is absolutely gorgeous i love it so much and question number 13 the final question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year i need to read a lot but i picked five for this there's obviously those books that were most my most anticipated for the second half of the year i'm obviously wanting to read those first we have signs of attraction by laura brown all I know is that our main character man in this book is deaf. That sounds so intriguing to me, this romance book. My friend Desi over on Instagram recommended this book to me. Um, she saw that there was disability representation in this, so very thankful for Desi. I'm very much looking forward to this. I'm going to read it any day now, hopefully. And then my current read is about of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I've been reading this book for like two weeks and I'm only on chapter four. <laughs> But that's just because I have I've been horrible at reading physically at the moment. This is the sequel to Hunger Games, the prequel book, all about President Snow. I'm enjoying it so far, so I need to finish this though. Then I have to read Find Me Their Bones by Sarah Wolf. This is the sequel to Bring Me Their Hearts. This came out in like December of 2019 and I still haven't read it yet. This is the sequel to a Young Adult Fantasy series that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I also want to read Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. I started it, I think I read like one or two chapters and I'll uh, put it down because I think a new release came out or something, but I'm still wanting to read it. Like this sounds so seeking good. All about like a witch having to marry a witch hunter and he doesn't know that she's a witch and that sounds so good. And then the last one that I've been meaning to read for so long is If You Come Softly by Jacqueline Woodson. I read a Jacqueline Woodson article in my multicultural children's literature class that I was in last year. I saw this book on Book Outlet before I stopped shopping at Book Outlet because uh, we all know Book Outlet is trash right now. But anyway, um, I had to pick this book up because I absolutely loved the article that she wrote and I had to pick this up. And I believe this is a like young adult, like contemporary romance book about a black boy and a girl who is Jewish and like, so good to me. I'm so excited for it. There you have it. That was my mid-year book freak out tag. Let me know down below if you have done this video yet. I would love to watch it. I love watching this tag so sticking much. Also let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so so much for watching. I'll see you soon in my next one. Bye! Mm -hmm.